Welcome, and in this video course, we are looking at the CyberOps Associate version one course. This course is going to cover the skills and knowledge needed for successfully handling the tasks and duties, responsibilities of an associate level security analyst working at a security operations center. The goal of this video series is to help prepare learners for the Cisco 200-201 certification. That's focusing on understanding the Cisco Cybersecurity Operation Fundamentals course, known as CBROPS. Module 27, working with networking security data. So in this module, we are looking at common platforms for data investigating network data and enhancing the work of cybersecurity analysts. So we're gonna be looking at kind of how the network security monitoring systems work, looking at security onions, and we're gonna be describing the network monitoring tools that will enhance the workflow and management. So our first area, common data platform. So we have our ELK. Our security onion will include elastic static that will consist of Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Gabbana, Elk. The core components of Elk are the, again, the Elasticsearch, which is an open core platform for searching and anal uh, analyzing. Logstash, that will be the, enables the collection and normalization of network data into data indexes. Gabbana will provide a graphical interface to the data and then beats the series of software plugins that send different types of data to the Elasticsearch data store. Again, this is how we acquire, store, and visualize our data. All of this allows us to dump our data into something more relevant because when we are looking at our PCAPs, our system logs, our alerts, there is a ton of data. So we need a process through ELK to reduce the amount of duplicate data, to reduce the amount of information to something more manageable so that we can really filter down to what's relevant in our systems. So our ELK allows us to take our PCAPs, our syslogs, our alerts, and other data and allow us to get more relevant data faster. All of this allows us to do things like data normalization. So we can take our IPv6 addresses, our MAC addresses, and our dates, and we can kind of start standardizing them because there are many different ways to display all of this content. And the problem with that is well, when we we're feeding it in from multiple locations, trying to correlate everything makes it more difficult. So data normalization is required so that we can simplify our searching for the correlated events. It allows us to standardize our outputs so that when we get diff many different inputs, we can standardize it so that we have one standard format for analyzing our data. Data archiving is, uh, again, uh, uh, is there as well. Archiving ad essentially deals with our retention. It's unrealistic to be able to retain indefinitely all data due to storage and access issues. Realistically, there is a retention period for the type of data collected. Squill, for example, will retain data for about 30 days by default. And this can uh, be manipulated by going to the securityonion.conf and modifying it. Security Onion can always be archived to external sources, to an external source or storage if necessary. The storage location of the different types of Security Onion data it will be based on the Security Onion implementation or the installation. We do have a lab walking us through the process that convert things to a universal format, and we'll do separate videos for our labs. The next section is investigating the network data, 
And again, that goes back to working with Squill, looking at the overall structure, looking in Security Onion, so that we can start correlating the similar alerts into a single line to provide a better way for us to see what's going on. And again, looking at the CNT column, that will be the alert count. Our Squill queries are also there. Queries can be constructed in Squill using the Query Builder. It simplifies the constructing queries to a certain degree. This allows us to really filter down in what we are trying to do. An analyst will need to know how to do our filtering. Oftentimes, you need to know the field names and some issues with the field values to effectively be to effectively build our queries in Squill. Again, we do have labs going through this and they are going to be really crucial in understanding our Squill process. For example, Squill will store IP addresses in an integer representation instead of a dot a decimal form. Pivoting from Squill, again, Squill will provide the ability for cybersecurity analysts to pivot to other information. Log files are available in Elasticsearch. Relevant packet captures can be displayed in Wireshark. Squill can provide the pivots to passive real-time asset detections and other security connections. Again, it's about linkages between the tools and understanding that Squill is an interface that will refer to other areas as necessary. Again, that's the pivoting portion in Squill. The nice thing to remember is that Squill is the console or the dashboard that allows the analyst to investigate, verify, classify the different security alerts. There are three tasks that can be completed in Squill to manage alerts. We have the ability to set the alerts that have been found to be false positive. You can actually flag them. Events can be escalated by pressing the F9 key and depending on how your system is set up. An event can be categorized. Squill will include seven built-in categories that can be assigned by using a menu or by pressing the corresponding function keys to escalate it. Squill was built to be used by security analysts. We also have our ELK. Our ELK is uh, a nice dashboard. So Logstash and Beats are used by data ingestion in the Elastic Stack. Cabana, which is the visual interface for our logs, is configured to show normally 24 hours by default. And the logs are ingested into Elasticsearch into separate indices or databases based on the configured time range. Basically, the best way to monitor the data in, Elasti in Elasticsearch is to build customized visual dashboards so that you can see what's going on. Just like any other tool, you can do queries in Elk using the query domain specific language DSL and with that you can use things like JSON or you can use other queries that like boolean operators or fields or ranges or wildcards regex fuzzy searching or text searching all of that can be built through our elk in our queries Elasticsearch was designed to interface with users using a web-based client using the REST framework. Methods used for executing the queries are the URI, curl, JSON, or other dev tools. There is a complexity to queries in ELK, but once you start doing them, they are a lot simpler than end users realize. It's just a matter of getting used to them. So now that we understand our queries using either ELK or Squill, we have to understand the ability to investigate processes or API calls. So here we have our OS and through our OS, we have OS calls using our API or application program interface. If malware, if malware can fool an OS kernel into allowing the system calls, then exploits could be easy. OSEC rules, can detect changes in host-based parameters, and then the OSEC rules will trigger the alerts in Squill. Pivoting to Cabana so that the host IP will allow you to choose the types of alert based on the program that it creates. 
Again, filtering for the OSAC indices will result in a view of the OSAC events that occurred on the host. Again, here we're just using OSAC in Squirrel to be able to look at the API and other details on a host. If we're looking at a file or file details in Squill, the analyst can look at suspicious files or hashes of those files, which then could be submitted online to see if it's known malware. In Cabana, Zeek uh, hunting can be used to display information. In Cabana, event types are shown as a bro file. Even though the new name for bro is Zeek, we haven't fully updated it just yet. We do have a lab going through regular expression tutorials because oftentimes learners don't know how to code regular expression correctly. We have a lab extracting executables from a PCAP file. We also in our course shell have a video to interpret HTTP and DNS data to isolate a threat actor. We have a lab interpreting HTTP and DNS data to isolate a threat actor. We have another video isolating compromised hosts using R5 tuple. We have a lab doing the exact same thing. We have a lab investigating our malware. We have a lab investigating an attack on our Windows host. This chapter, if you have not realized, is very heavy on our lab content and we will be doing separate videos for each of the labs. Our last major section is enhancing the work of the cybersecurity analysts. Dashboards and visualization are really critical. Human people are visual people. Very few people can look at logs and truly grasp all of the events of what's going on. So dashboards will provide a combination of data and visualization that allows the security analyst to focus on more meaningful content. The dashboards are normally interactive and we have tools like Cabana which will allow us or give us the capability of designing our custom dashboards. In addition, in addition there are things like Squirt and Security Onion that will provide a visual interface to our data. After that we need to understand the workflow management. This is basically the sequences of processes and procedures through the work tasks which are then completed. So managing a SOC workflow means enhancing the efficiency of the operational team, increasing the accountability of the staff, ensuring potential alerts are actually treated and triaged properly, and then understanding what tools will allow us to view that workflow. We have Squill which will provide a basic workflow management, but again, as you're growing, this isn't necessarily the best option for our large teams. Automated queries will add the efficiency to the operational workflow. However, these queries need to be done thoughtfully within your organization uh, in mind. These queries automatically search for complex security incidences and, and alert them. Keep in mind, they may look for patterns that otherwise may have eluded a regular technician. And that is all for this chapter. We covered a ton of material. We looked at ELK, how ELK was built. We looked at the ability for dashboarding and visualization. We looked at Squill and Cabana and kind of understanding the workflow management. That is all I had for this module. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture help build long-term retention, so do not be afraid to communicate with this topic. Again, I'm here if you need anything. Thank you.